Hi everyone and welcome back to Learn Neuroradiology. We're here again with our part five of our FAST10 Neuroradiology review cases. We're gonna have 10 more cases today to help you get over the last little hump on your board preparation. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna spend about one minute per case. We're gonna have a quick uh, multiple choice question. Then we're gonna go over the answer and a little bit about the diagnosis. So let's begin. So case number 41 is a 68 year old woman with progressive weakness in both legs, fatigue. We've got a flare. This is a little bit of a blurry post-contrast image here. Your choices are colloid cyst, lymphoma, choroid plexus carcinoma, or subependymoma. So this is a case of subependymoma. What do you have here is you have an intraventricular mass that's kind of sitting in the anterior margin of the left lateral ventricle, kind of near the foramen of Monroe. Pretty decent place for central neurocytoma, but what you don't have is you don't have avid enhancement. When you see an intraventricular mass without much enhancement, you should be thinking about a subependymoma. These are grade one tumors arriving from, arising from the subependymal margin, and uh, they're not that common, but when you see a non-enhancing mass, think about that. Now, most ependymomas enhance more avidly, central neurocytomas as well. Subependymal giant cell tumors are those associated with tuberous sclerosis. Uh, they can have a similar appearance, but they also uh, tend to enhance a little bit more. So remember, non-enhancing intraventricular mass, probably subependymoma. Case number 42 is a 38-year-old man with three-week history of headache, confusion, memory difficulties, kind of some other generalized neurologic symptoms. Got a couple of sets of images here. This is a T2. This is a flare. This is an ADC map and a post-contrast. Your choices are glioblastoma, lymphoma, ventriculitis, or subependymoma. So hopefully you're paying attention to that last case. But this is a case of lymphoma. This is a pretty classic case of lymphoma. What you have is you have a nodular T2 hypo-intense uh, enhancing abnormality along the margins of the ventricle. It's multifocal. It's dark on ADC. If you had a diffusion a DWI, it would be bright. And uh, you've got some flare abnormality around it. Uh, these are often associated with immunosuppression. So you'll see them in patients with HIV or on immune suppression for transplants. Uh, often they uh, will be multiple. So you may see lesions elsewhere. Along the ventric ventricular margins is a very common location. Basal ganglia, kind of a cerebral white matter, very common. Uh, these tend to be solid in immunocompetent patients. They can be uh, peripherally enhancing and centrally necrotic in immunocompromised patients. So just keep that in mind. Case number 43 is a 57 year old man with pain. I have a couple of images here. You've got a couple of images from a brain. This is a T2 and a post contrast. You've got this additional image of the spine. Maybe that's a clue. Your choices are metastatic disease, aneurysmal bone cyst, hemangioma, or lipoma. So this is a case of metastatic disease. Hopefully the fact that you had spine imaging along with your head imaging was a clue. What you have is a T2 hyperintense lesion in the anterior calvarium here. It's got a little bit of peripheral enhancement, a little bit of nodularity to it. Without this, you can't really tell. It's a little bit nonspecific, but you do have bone destruction. It's not a lipoma because it doesn't suppress on fat suppressed imaging. But in conjunction with a mass in the lumbar spine vertebral body, you have to be thinking about metastatic disease. Uh, when you see these, they're often associated with other common malignancies, breast and lung cancer. We see a lot of melanoma, renal cell carcinoma in children, like maybe think about neuroblastoma. Uh, these are common malignancies that can metastasize to bone. Case number 44 is an 80 year old woman with a complex medical history. So she had a bunch of problems, hypertension, you know, whatever. These are images from her brain MRI. Got a T2 and a post contrast here. Your choices are metastatic disease, fibrous dysplasia, Paget's disease, or meningioma. So this is a case of a meningioma. What you have here is you've got a mass that appears to be centered in the bone. It's got a significant extradural component, but it looks like it has a little CSF cleft around it. You've also got a significant extra calvarial component. Now what you'll look, if you look, there's some destruction of the bone there, but some of the underlying matrix remains. That's relatively uncommon for metastatic disease. When you see that, the three things in your differential should be meningioma, myeloma, and lymphoma. Now this also has some other classic features of meningioma. This T2 hyperintense uh, radiating structure is pretty common in meningioma. 
this pedicle here where it looks like vessels are radiating out in a sort of star shaped pattern, also classic for a meningioma. So when you see these, think about meningioma. Case number 45, the patient with altered mental status. You have some images from a CT. You have some images from a post-contrast MR. Your choices are lymphoma, septic emboli, metastatic disease, or cystocercosis. This is a case of metastatic disease. What you see on the CT is you've got multiple hyperdense masses. This one has a hematocrit level here. These are hemorrhagic masses. You've got a number of small scattered areas of hemorrhage. Many of these are at the gray-white junction. On your post-contrast imaging, it confirms that you have these masses as well as many more. Uh, so there are numerous masses, like even on this single image. Uh, because of the location, you have to be thinking about metastatic disease. The associated enhancement really pushes you towards metastatic disease. Uh, we've already seen the most common parenchymal masses are lung, breast cancer, and melanoma. Uh, the most common hemorrhagic masses, if you see hemorrhage like this, are renal cell carcinoma and melanoma. Uh, these are not septic emboli because they're too round and too enhancing. Uh, they're not cysticercosis because you don't have any, uh, any cystic component. Uh, so metastatic disease is the best choice here. Case number 46 is a 20-year-old with precocious puberty. Got a T2 and a post-contrast here. I've highlighted it on several occasions, but the post-contrast has enhancement of the nasal mucosa, also a little enhancement of the vessels here. Your choices are germinoma, craniopharyngioma, hypothalamic hematoma, or pituitary adenoma. This is a case of hypothalamic hamartoma. What you have is you've got a T2 kind of isointense to gray matter lesion in the hypothalamic region. On your post-contrast imaging, what you see is something isointense to gray matter again, not much enhancement. Now you'll see it is not centered in the infundibulum. It's not in the pituitary, so it's probably not an adenoma. So a non-enhancing mass in this location is likely a hypothalamic hamartoma. Now the history you'll often see about these is that they're uh, the symptom that you'll have a gelastic or laughing seizure. However, that's not the most common presentation. The most common presentation is precocious puberty or early puberty. Patients can also get uh, other weird seizures uh, in this location. But if you see a non-enhancing mass in this location, think hypothalamic hematoma. Germinomas, craniopharyngiomas, they all tend to be more heterogeneous and have more enhancement. Case number 47 is an 18-year-old presenting with headache, two images here pre and post contrast really key for you to recognize that that's a pre-contrast um, the choices here are pituitary adenoma germinoma sarcoid or Langerhans cell histiocytosis or lch this is a case of pituitary adenoma what you have on your pre-contrast imaging is you've got a t1 hyper intense and somewhat heterogeneous looking mass with some septations through it. If you look, you've probably got a thin rim of enhancement along the top on the post-contrast images. But if you look, this is replacing the pituitary. You've got some expansion of the cella. So this is a pituitary adenoma, which has hemorrhage or pituitary apoplexy. Now, most commonly, these are either non-secreting or the secreting ones are most likely to be prolactinoma. It's very common for them to be heterogeneous or have cystic changes. Uh, they will have enhancement most frequently. It's been replaced by the T1 hyperintensity that's probably from hemorrhage. Case number 48 is a 14 year old with headache. You've got some images through the posterior fossa here, a T2, a post contrast. Your choices are hemangioblastoma, ependymoma, medulloblastoma, or pilocytic astrocytoma. This is a case of a pilocytic astrocytoma. What you've got is a teenager with a pretty well circumscribed mass in the left posterior fossa, some edema around it, some mass effect. What you see is there's some, a little bit of heterogeneous enhancement. If you see a posterior fossa mass in a child, the most common pediatric brain tumor is going to be a pilocytic astrocytoma. These are relatively benign tumors that have relatively good survival. Uh, so these are, uh, this is the most likely uh, brain tumor in a kid here is a pilocytic astrocytoma. Case number 49 is a 52-year-old woman with headache, dizziness, and hearing loss. Got two post-contrast images here, an axial and a coronal. Your choices are meningioma, metastatic disease, vestibular schwannoma, or ependymoma. 
this is a case of a meningioma. We've covered a lot of the other cerebellopontine angle masses here. I'll tell you why this one is a meningioma. Number one, if you look at it, it looks like it's centered along the tentorium or dura here. It does extend maybe into the IEC a little bit, but it doesn't cause expansion. It doesn't look like it's centered there. Now, if you see one of these masses and they happen to be FDG avid or hyperperfusing, don't worry about that. Meningiomas can do that. But uh, the gist of this is CP angle mass, if it's enhancing, it's a schwannoma or meningioma. If it's centered in and expands the IC, it's a schwannoma. If it's outside, it's probably a meningioma. Case number 50 is a 61-year-old man with left-sided numbness, weakness, and slurred speech. Got a couple of images here, a flare and a post-contrast. Your choices are toxoplasmosis, pleomorphic xanthoastrocytoma, or PXA, DNAT, or glioblastoma. This is kind of a classic case of a glioblastoma. What you have is a frontal mass in the frontal lobe here, a lot of edema around it, probably has some white matter abnormality extending through the genome of the corpus callosum here. On post contrast, a lot of peripheral enhancement, central necrosis. This is a classic appearance of a GBM. Uh, you can have hemorrhage and flow voids associated with these. Your differential is really metastatic disease or lymphoma. If you see more white matter infiltration, like think about a glioblastoma, lymphomas tend to be more solidly enhancing, particularly in immunocompetent patients. That's the last of our 10 cases for this set. We're going to have one more set to get us uh, through case 60. I hope you're enjoying the cases, especially this quick review format. Uh, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe so you get notifications. Thanks for tuning in today, and we'll see you uh, for the next video. Thanks.